imagine this. Imagine uh, you're saying, imagine you say that in late antique Judaism and Christianity and Latin and Roman custom, the left hand was associated with evil. So you, they could say in theory, this report was made up because of these existing traditions. Or maybe the prophet just liked to eat with his right hand. Or maybe he was acting according to existing traditions that said that the left hand was associated with negativity. Another, a good example of this is, again, it came with a, a debate from, or I had it with Tom Holland. He wrote in his book in the shade of the, actually I knew this because I was on that radio show with him and he said this and I was just, I couldn't believe it. Um, he claims that the five daily prayers came from Zoroastrianism. Not, okay, um, what he means is that after the death of the prophet, in the early Islamic period, Muslims were like, hey guys, these Zoroastrians, they got these five daily prayers. Let's do it. <laughs> that's, that's basically his argument. I'm not trying to make fun of Tom Holland since it's getting recorded, and I'm sure I'm going to get in trouble for that. Georgetown professor makes fun of Tom Holland. <laughs> I'm not making fun. I'm not saying he had, but that's basically the idea, right? You know, he, he ba they, there's a conspiracy that sort of, again, this is orthodoxy, right? This wasn't the original form. This gets built up af afterwards and then retroactively projected to the origins. What's his argument? And we'll get into this a bit next time, but the, you, you don't believe don't believe people when they talk about themselves. You can't believe a religious tradition's story of itself unless it's making itself look bad. Then you can believe it. So was that because they just couldn't fathom the fact that this, the religion itself was perfect? Or, you know, yeah, because remember, the, the assumption is religions are not born intact. In their experience with Christianity. With Christianity. With Christianity and Judaism. Christianity. And by the way, lots of things in Islam were not, I mean, there's lots of things in Islamic law and dogma and stuff that, that were not there originally. And Muslim scholars acknowledge all of this. Of course, there weren't medhebs, there weren't schools of theology, there wasn't kalam, there wasn't ilm al-hadith, there wasn't fiqh, all these things. But, so it, what, what is Tom, Tom uh, Holland's argument, okay? He says that there's a rabbi in the late 700s in central Iraq, who says some Zoroastrians, when they became Muslim, they continued to practice existing traditions. It doesn't say they continued to practice five daily prayers. In fact, it's actually talking about drinking. That report doesn't appear, we don't, it's not like we have that rabbi's diary. It appears in a a 12th century work in France, written by a rabbi in France, which is actually a 18th and 19th century forgery. That's his source, okay? So what he's saying is, I'm going to believe a 19th century forged book that claims to be a 12th century rabbi writing about, reporting, making a report from an 8th century rabbi in Iraq that says that Zoroastrian converts who became Muslim kept continued drinking. No mention of the five daily prayers. That is revisionism. I.e., as long as it's not from Muslims or the, it, it, it's, it, whatever it comes from, it's true. And even if that chain of reasoning is a lot crazier, look, we know that Islam took up a pre-existing practices. The Quran says, you know, kutub alaykum al-Quran, al-Salm kama al-Siyam kama kutub al-Ladin min qablikum. Fasting is ordained for you, as it was ordained from those before you. The Hajj, all this stuff is pre-Islamic. Maybe it, the five daily prayers were a custom that the Zoroastrians have. But the, pro, the, the Prophet adopted this into Islam. So it's a legitimate part of the religion. Instead of why is that such an outrageous idea? I mean, that's a perfect example of revisionism gone wild. It sounds like a good TV, TV show. <laughs>